nothing dominates the world's oceans like the orca, a nearly flawless predatory machine. It can not only outmuscle, but outsmart almost any animal on Earth. With an astonishing level of teamwork, orcas execute some of the boldest hunting strategies in the animal kingdom. It's one of nature's finest examples of biomechanical engineering, like it's never been seen before. From the inside out, all through the eyes, of Eye Predator. takes a huge risk coming up onto the beach to make this kill. Because even the slightest miscalculation could leave her stranded. But it results in a huge caloric payday. It's daring hunting strategies like these that make orcas the ocean's most dominant hunters. Orca are incredibly powerful predators. I mean, realistically, they are the top predator in the ocean. And they eat sharks for breakfast. And often just the sheer size of them is enough to overcome their prey. Despite being called killer whales, Orcas are actually the largest dolphin species on Earth. They've earned their nickname because they're one of the few predators on the planet that can actually kill whales. They're extremely hunting different animals. Each of their prey employs unique defensive countermeasures and poses its own specific problem have to solve in order to survive and they do it as a team unlike great white sharks orcas are not exclusively solitary predators they often spend their entire lives hunting with their families called pods tight-knit units usually led by mothers and even grandmothers who pass their knowledge on to each generation. Not many of the young leave the mother. They stick around and they are able to communicate so effectively together that their actual hunting process is a group process. Orcas are the ultimate social predator. Off the coast of Argentina in the early fall, this pod of orcas survives in large part by coming up onto the beach in a move called intentional stranding. Here, droves of sea lion pups line the shores, just learning to swim. are like sitting ducks. If an orca can figure out how to get them. An adult orca needs to eat an average of 225 kilograms of food each day just to survive. So the four orcas in this pod collectively would need to eat nine sea lion pups every day just to make it through the year. Each member of the group has to pitch in. And that's why nothing is more crucial than a mother teaching her young to hunt. 
the mother will start to teach the calf at even just two months of age how to contribute the, to the group and how to go after their prey. And this mother is about to train her daughter in the art of intentional stranding. It's probably the riskiest hunting strategy for any animal around the whole globe. Because if they get it wrong, they'll die. They'll get stuck on the beach and they just can't get back off. If an orca makes a mistake, more often than not, it will lead to her death. So the mother orca has to be thorough. She takes a couple of test rods to gauge the surface of the beach and angle of incline. There's a lot of work and effort and planning and training that's gone into getting up on the beach to take these sea lion pups. And she's working out, is the beach steep enough here? Once I launch myself up, can I get back off again? Is it safe for me to take my calf with me and train this new calf how to catch these pups? She pushes her daughter in and out of the shallow water to get her familiar with the foreign sensation of land beneath her body. Now it's time to show her how it's done. To explode onto the shore, she needs to build up to 30 kilometers per hour in a hurry. And she does it with one of the most flawless swimming motions in nature. She starts with a powerful downstroke, driven by the massive muscle stretching from her dorsal fin to her fluke, and flicks the fluke downwards. At the very bottom of the stroke, the fluke whips back up at a 90 degree angle. Then, the rest of her body follows into the upstroke, generating 100 eight horsepower. The energy generated from these four motions is so powerful, it could light up all of New York City for more than a second. And before he knows what hit him, the sea lion pup is wedged into her mighty jaws. She gives the pup a brutal beating. All the thrashing is really to injure the animal. If it's just held in the mouth, it stands a chance of potentially scratching or injuring the orca. But if you're thrashing it around, it doesn't matter where to aim for and you stand a better chance of not getting injured by your food. But after she hammers the pup, with her curious daughter watching by her side, she does something that seems to go against the behavior of nearly every predator in the world. She lets her prey get away on purpose. The orca need to train a lot to do this intentional stranding. And then sometimes when they're finished practicing, if they're not hungry, they let the pup go and it will return to the beach. Two days later, having learned from her mother, the young orca is ready to try hunting on her own. She listens for the sound of pebbles shifting and pups splashing and hones in on a target. She creeps to within 15 meters of the shore and accelerates. She's not only missed the sea lion, but she came in too hot. And now she's wedged into the rough sand.
is not built for this. And if she can't figure out how to get off this beach, she's going to die. Water covers half her body, but this young orca isn't buoyant enough to swim away. Having not yet mastered the discipline of intentional stranding, the cat was too aggressive, launching herself onto the beach at nearly 50 kilometers per hour, attacking at her impressive top speed may prove to be a fatal mistake. Her nearly two and a half metric ton body is being threatened by an unexpected killer, gravity. Her skeleton is designed for aquatic motion, not for movement on land like humans. Our hip bones are strong and wide, able to distribute all of our weight. But her hip bone is the width of a human pinky finger. Unable to support her 2,500 kilograms. So she can't prevent the force of gravity from compressing her lungs. And her oxygen intake plummets. And to make matters worse, the pressure on her body is damaging her cell membranes. Driving proteins out of her muscles and into her bloodstream. Her kidneys try to filter out the proteins but they're toxic to the cells. If too many proteins are released, they'll eventually cause her kidneys to fail. This killer whale isn't just out of water. She's out of time. She calls out in desperation. mother hears her call and responds immediately. She can't physically rescue her cat. But she can save her life by teaching her cat to save herself. Wriggling her body to loosen the sand. movements, she might be able to pry herself off the beach. And she'll use her pectoral fins to just try and push herself off the beach. And then when she's turned around, her tail's just going absolutely nuts. narrowly escapes death and learns a lesson that she'll carry with her for the rest of her life. This may be the first time communication saved her life, but it won't be the last. Because strong communication is essential to the orca's survival. But off the coast of British Columbia, Canada, This pod of orcas also understands when to avoid communicating. They're hunting an elephant seal. A mother load of fat. Over one million calories. slightest noise from these orcas could easily cost them a meal. Because nature has fine-tuned the elephant seal's hearing to lock in on the orca's vocalizations. It's a bite
biomechanical alarm system that allows him to detect his attacker before the attack even begins. The orcas stalk in silence. But as they close in on the seal, the youngest of the pod begins to chatter, crossing the frequency threshold. three minutes to catch him before her oxygen runs out. At this pace, she'll never catch the seal in time. But as she nears a depth of 70 meters, her body transforms into a deep sea diving machine. Suddenly, her lungs begin to collapse prevent gases from escaping into the blood, avoiding a potentially deadly case of the bends. As her lungs deflate to just a fraction of their original size, her body volume decreases. She's now actually heavier than water and plunges like a rock. is gaining on her prey. But as they dive deeper, the genetic advantage shifts to the seal. The oxygen-rich blood in his body equips him to dive for over a kilometer. The young orca has pushed her body to the limit. And at nearly 250 meters, with her oxygen dwindling, she has to turn back. The young orca's careless approach blew the big score for her pod. Over a million calories lost in the depths of the ocean. So now, rather than hunt in open water, she'll head towards shore, where prey congregate in larger numbers. With more targets, the odds of making a kill increase. But here in the shallows, the water grows murky. And it's tough to kill what you can't see. is still a master tracker. Able to hunt down almost any prey, even without the use of her eyes. That's because she uses echolocation, a biological sonar system so strong, she can sense a target the size of a tangerine from 100 meters away. She sends out clicking sounds from her nasal passages, firing off hundreds of them in just one second. These clicks shoot through the water at 1,500 meters per second, nearly five times faster than sound travels through air. In a matter of seconds, sound echoes back to her as data. She knows there are two big animals swimming. They're nearly a kilometer away. And she even knows which direction to find them. 
but they're not ideal targets. They're big, and they may have enough fight in them to injure her. So she moves in to investigate further, initiating a phase of echolocation even more advanced than military sonar. From the variation in the speed of the clicks returning to her, she knows they're about one and a half meters long and weigh 90 kilograms. They have at least five centimeters of blubber coating their bodies. That means they're sea lions, adults. And finally, the crucial piece of information comes in. One of them is moving erratically and has an unusual density. It's injured, a broken rib, the perfect target. But just because this sea lion is injured, doesn't mean he's harmless. When a sea lion is captured by an orca, it's fighting for its life. It's going to try to get away from that orca by lashing out and trying to scratch the orca. To minimize the risk of a devastating injury, the orcas need to attack with a strategy. extremely savage it's almost cruel when they're hunting these animals because you just wish they'd kill them already it may seem cruel but it allows the orcas to disable their prey without being injured by their prey and they've developed creative and spectacular ways to do it snap of her fluke, the young orca hurls the sea lion nine meters into the air. Soaring at over 45 kilometers per hour, the sea lion slams into the ocean. The orcas take turns battering their prey. They don't want to risk injury, so they back off and wait for him to die. But suddenly, the sea lion jolts to life. Despite suffering bruised organs and broken bones, he's resilient enough to push on. And he's got one shot to beat the orcas to the shore. If he gets away, the orcas will lose yet another valuable meal. The sea lion is swimming frantically. And suddenly, the orca's prey is less than 45 meters away from escaping to the beach. With just seconds to catch him, the orcas burst into top speed, 55 kilometers per hour. The young orca delivers the final blow and drags it beneath the water to share with the rest of the pod. 
Orcas are an innately generous species, ensuring each hungry member of the pod gets a piece of the kill. But the sea lion is less than half the nourishment this pod needs in a day. So they'll have no choice but to hunt again soon. But another pod of orcas, 1,300 kilometers south off the shore of Monterey, California, has a more ambitious plan. To hunt down an enormous meal. One that could sustain every member of the pod for an entire week. A gray whale calf. At 6,800 kilograms, the weight of two large SUVs, this calf is no easy kill. And to make matters worse, she's protected by a 30,000 kilogram bodyguard. Her mother. And not only is she too big and strong for the orcas to kill, She's capable of killing them with just one swipe of her massive tail. So the orcas need a battle plan. It begins by patrolling the north end of Monterey Bay Canyon, through which hundreds of gray whale mothers and calves pass on their migration north from Mexico to Alaska. Over time, many gray whales have adapted to the orca's threat, going the long way, hugging the coastline. Here, the shallow, kelp-filled water prevents the orcas from getting underneath the whales to ram them. But today, this gray whale mother takes her calf on a shortcut, straight through the deep open waters offshore. where a pod of orcas is waiting. The orcas know they have only one shot at a kill, so they proceed with caution. They can't afford to use their powerfully accurate echolocation because the gray whales are hypersensitive to their clicks. They'll feel the echolocation on their skin and feels like when you stand in front of speakers at a rock concert you can just feel that pulsing noise. So the orcas have to shift to an alternate tracking system. They stop moving and become deathly quiet. It's called passive listening. And in this state, focused completely on their environment, they can hear sounds from nearly 30 kilometers away. They pick up the sounds of a gray whale and her calf, about nine kilometers to the south. And in an instant, the orcas line up in formation to initiate the first phase of their attack. Synchronized swimming. They'll streamline each other's wake just to cut down any type of drag, splashing or perceptible noise that their prey might pick up on and make it that much harder to capture. In a remarkable display of coordination, the five orcas move as one, dramatically quieter and quicker. But as they get closer, the youngest of the pod lets his excitement get the better of him. Falling out of sync with the others, and suddenly, the gray whales know they're being hunted. Their only chance is to swim to the coast. If 
If they can reach the shallows before the orcas catch them, they'll be safe. But if the orcas can trap the whale calf in deep water, they'll have plenty of room to initiate an attack from below. For the orcas, it's a race for a meal. For the gray whale calf, it's a race for his life. The gray whales are six kilometers from the safety of shallow waters, but they have less than a one kilometer lead on the orcas. And that lead is disappearing. These four metric ton orcas move faster than the fastest human because they're built for speed from the inside out. At his core is a massive ball of muscle running down his spine. But it's what surrounds that muscular core that really gives him his power. A layer of springy connected tissue interwoven into the muscles and tendons like thousands of rubber bands. When he bows his torso in one direction, the fibers stretch and then release like a slingshot, pulling him in the other direction until they stretch again. This spring-loaded locomotion is so efficient that every swipe of his muscle kicks back with 87% of the energy he expends. It's what allows him to make a burst up to his top speed of 55 kilometers per hour look effortless. With the gray whale calf only able to swim 12 kilometers per hour, the orcas quickly close the gap. But before they initiate an attack, they try to neutralize their biggest threat, the mother whale. Two of the orcas poke at the mother, trying to distract her, leaving the calf vulnerable. rams his massive skull into the calf's belly. The skull of the orca has evolved to such a stage where it's, it's really a big, hard piece of bone. They're bursting into the side of these grey whales and they're trying to cause internal bleeding, fractures or injury that would exhaust the animal. Orcas take turns hammering the gray whale calf. But the mother is a furious defender. They have to somehow isolate her from the calf. So one of the orcas tries to wedge himself between the whales, trying to separate the two without being struck by the mother's powerful tail. Sandwiched between nearly 40,000 kilograms of gray whale, the orca's not willing to risk his life and backs off. For now. Orca are extremely determined. And once they set their mind on a particular item, they are determined to get it. And that can last for two hours or longer just to get that one animal that they're trying to hunt. The pod regroups and surrounds the greys. Instead of ramming, they leap on top of the calf, trying to push it underwater so it can't resurface to breathe. The new tech 
tactic is working. The Mother Grey tries to fight off the flurry of Orca attacks. But there are too many of them. And she doesn't have the strength to stop it. At some point, that mother will become so exhausted that she starts to succumb to the attack as well. This is a difficult decision to make, but eventually the mother will have to let that calf go, or else they're both going to be lost. After a brutal three-hour attack, the orcas push the calf underwater. And it drowns. The orcas' tenacity paid off, earning them a meal. But they can't just dig right in. The calf's blubber is over 10 centimeters thick and nearly impenetrable. If you imagine if you're a human trying to take a bite out of the side of a watermelon, all you're going to do is leave teeth marks on the side. Same sort of a concept with the orca. So the orcas devour the soft spots, the tongue and the lower jaw. We typically think of it as wasteful that the orcas would perhaps only eat the tongue or the vulnerable mouth parts. But when we really think about it, that can still be thousands of pounds of meat. It's a massive reward. Well worth the risk of challenging a grey whale. It's a deadly demonstration of the orca's unparalleled determination. And nowhere is this determination more vital to the orca's survival. Here, prey is extremely elusive. This seal is a 250 kilogram fat filled meal, but the orcas are unable to reach it. So they have to devise a way for him to come to them. Orcas are smart, and not just average smart. I mean, they're really, really intelligent. They're very good at problem solving and understanding cause and effect. And right now, they're facing a 55,000 kilogram problem. That's the weight of this 15 meter by 10 meter ice flow. Tipping it is out of the question. The orcas simply can't get the leverage to lift and hold it long enough for the seal to slide off. And the ice is hard. Strong as they are, the orcas stand little chance of breaking the ice flow by ramming it. So where Braun fails them, brains take over. swims to one end of the ice flow and submerges while two others swim away from the ice and disappear suddenly there's no activity at all and it looks as if they may have given up on this seal the looks can be deceiving shatters into five pieces and the seal's life raft has just shrunk by 80 percent it's the result of one of the most amazing displays of cooperative predation in all of nature have 
mastered the art of wave hunting, in which the water itself actually becomes the orca's deadliest weapon. From 15 meters away, two orcas swim in perfect synchronicity toward the flow. They quickly build up to 30 kilometers per hour, swimming as close to the surface as possible without ever breaking it. And the seal can't even see them coming. Because the orcas have tilted to the right, their typically visible dorsal fins are submerged, allowing them to get within just centimeters of the flow before they shoot downward, darting underneath the ice. The force and acceleration of their bodies create a vortex, which pulls the ice flow down and creates a one meter wave. So powerful that it actually breaks the 55,000 kilogram flow into five pieces, leaving the seal on thin ice. A second wave of that size could leave the seal with nothing, and he senses the danger. He resurfaces on a flow nearly three times larger than the first. The orcas are ultimately persistent. If they don't get what they want right away, they'll keep going after and after and after. The orcas encircle the 375 square meter flow and prepare for the next phase of their attack, in which every member of the pod has a job to do. This is probably the most coordinated method of hunting for any animal anywhere in the world. First, they hit it with a quick wave to break off the weak fringe ice. second wave hits, but it's too small to do much damage. The orcas need a bigger wave to crack up this massive block of ice. But the seal's flow is surrounded by smaller ice chunks, like dozens of speed bumps to slow down the orca's approach. So it's time to do a little maintenance. Cleaning debris is important but it's merely preparation for the strategic centerpiece of the orca's master plan. Moving the massive flow to clearer waters. They actually physically put their noses against it and push the ice out of the way. They can predict the future in terms of understanding if they do this, that will happen. And there's not many animals that can come up with that sort of concept. Moving the 93,000 kilogram flow to open water makes it harder for the seal to escape to another flow. And it gives the orcas enough space to hammer the ice with powerful waves. the ice flow by about 20 percent. With the flow down to seven by eight meters, it's small enough that the orcas can enact the final phase of their attack. This pot of orcas took out their prey in an unparalleled display of creativity and teamwork. It's very obvious that that's based on the communication that they have with each other. To be able to coordinate things like a wave attack really requires a lot of skill and perfect timing 
and I find it hard to have a group of people who could do something like that. With an incredible ability to learn, orcas continue to adapt to their environments and expand their range of predatory strategies. Refusing to accept the limitations of a typical aquatic animal, they've extended their predatory reach onto land. They've maximized their strength and honed their strategy to take on a creature that weighs nearly as much as a jet plane. They've learned when to abandon brute force to engage in a cunning battle of biomechanics. And they've developed hunting methods as precise and coordinated as a tactical military unit. It's this remarkable ability to work together to overcome almost any challenge that makes the orca the ocean's most dominant predator.